Hello, my name is Jeremy Barnes, and today I'm going to do a video about the movies that I'm looking forward to for 2023. So, number one is actually a DC movie. It is The Flash, which is due out June 23rd of next year. And a lot of my top ones... Uh, coincidentally are all multiverse movies and the flash is definitely going to be that i feel like it's going to be the movie that does the reboot of the dc film universe um with the whole multiverse aspect and time travel that the flash is capable of so far we've only seen like a little sneak peek at it officially online um but i'm hoping to see a trailer come the new year um and start finding out more about it but it's going to be an interesting marketing um season for that movie because of all the controversy surrounding ezra miller despite all that i'm still excited for the movie um what it, what we did see i think was cool and i like the idea of having many batman in the movie just because i'm a batman fan um, so I'm a little biased in that sense. Um, more of a Batman fan for sure than The Flash, but the TV show did make me a fan. So I am hoping his story is also servicing him. Um, and I hope they do a good job with that. But we, w we will see. Number two on my list is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And I think the biggest draw for me with that one is Kang the Conqueror. But the movie itself just looks like really good to me. And I've never been, like, I would have never expected to be super excited about an Ant-Man movie. Especially not more excited for that than the other Marvel movies coming out. Especially Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, which is actually next on my list. Um, so they're pretty close. But I actually am more excited for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania. Um... And that one is due out February 17th, so it's the next Marvel movie coming out. And then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will be May 5th. And uh, that one is is set to be a good like wrap-up of the Guardians like kind of story as a group, as a team, and that incarnation of it. We'll see if anybody moves on past this movie or if the team shifts in some way. But uh, it looks like it's going to be very emotional. And very kind of crazy on a cosmic like scale with the visuals and everything and probably action packed as well. So I am excited for that. Next on my list, another multiverse movie, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And that one's due out June 2nd. So there's two multiverse movies coming out in the same month which I know is crazy. Um, but this one from the recent trailer that just came out also looks amazing. And the first movie was amazing. So the team behind it, uh, mainly the writers, I think, Quill Lord and, and Chris Miller, they, they I think, are going to ensure that this movie is, is really good. And I'm, gonna, I'm excited to see all the like new spider people that I never even heard of as well as continuing Miles' story and, and seeing a little bit more of Gwen's story from the introduction of Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. Um, but yeah, I have, high, I have high hopes and expectations and I, and I think they will meet them. Um, the next one on my list is the next Christopher Nolan movie. I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Uh, him as a director, I think, is, is like one of the greats, um, one of my favorite directors, for sure. Um, Oppenheimer is his next film. Now it's coming out my birthday month, July, on the 21st. And that trailer, like, looked crazy. It looks very dramatic, like most Christopher Nolan movies are, but shot beautifully. And it, it, it looks to seem... Like, that there's going to be different levels to it. Um, like, with the kind of cosmic implications of the nuclear bomb, as well as actually detonating the bomb that we're going to see. Um, and we're going to see, I think, into the mind of Oppenheimer himself, the one who helped 
create it and who the movie is based off of, obviously. Um, and it looks yeah, it looks really good. So I'm excited to to see what it what it's all about when it, when it comes out. Um, the next one on my list is Creed Three, and that one's also coming out sooner, uh, March third, and also starring Jonathan Majors, just like in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. Um, this one is not as exciting to me from the trailer as as like the first two were, but uh, I do think it will be hopefully decent. It is Michael B. Jordan, the actor who plays Creed, his directorial debut. So I am rooting for him to succeed with this movie. Um, and he knows the character. Obviously, he's played him twice now. So hopefully him being behind the wheel um, and not like behind the camera will ensure that it is uh, what he wants it to be and hopefully good. And Jonathan Majors is a, is a good... Uh, Actors, so he's gonna be a villain in two movies pretty early on in 2023. <clears throat> we'll see which one's better. He seems more like villainous in Creed Three than he is a a actually as Kane, which is kind of surprising. But we'll see what actually happens. Um, but the first Creed movie is actually my favorite movie in the Rocky universe, even better than in, than any Rocky movie in my opinion. Um, so I'm always rooting for another great one. Next on my list is the Marvels, another Marvel movie, uh, Captain Marvel 2, technically, also starring Miss Marvel, which just had a series last year, and uh, Monica Rambeau, Rambeau, who also had um, a series in WandaVision in 2020. <clears throat> so I'm excited to see her back in the Marvel Universe, and all three of them join together as the Marvels, and another cosmic adventure. I was one of the few really big fans of Eternals, so I'm hoping we get some more like cool cosmic stuff in that movie, and I think that one's going to be even more cosmic, because it's actually not going to be on Earth, um, so I'm excited about that as well. Um, next on my list is Scream 6, which is also coming out in March on the 31st. I'm kind of surprised that, that it's coming out so soon, like just a year after the first movie. Well, first as in like Scream 5. Um, the first with this new younger cast. And they have only released a small, small teaser for the movie. And that did not really do anything to excite me. But they are moving outside of uh, Woodsboro. So into the big city, which that's going to be kind of interesting because I don't think they've ever done that. They've done outside of Woodsboro, but it's always been in still in like kind of a small town area. Um, but this one is in, is going to be in an urban area. So it's the first time the Scream franchise has done that. So hopefully it ends up being uh, good and interesting. Um, but we shall see. But I'm a big Scream fan, so that's why it is on my list. <clears throat> uh, and then the last three are actually all DC movies. The... Next one is Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which also is coming out in March. So we have a lot of March movies next year, or just a lot of early uh, releases. That one's coming out March 17th, and this one is higher than the other two that are remaining because Shazam, the first movie, was actually really good in my opinion and actually one of the better movies in the DC film universe. Um, so I'm sure this one will kind of be on a similar level uh, but also with more action and like a bigger budget which will hopefully make me even like it more even more than the first one um but that's all i'm going to say about that another one that i'm excited about but we which we haven't seen any sort of footage or trailer for is blue beetle which originally from what I heard, it was supposed to be like an HBO Max movie, but is now going to be released in theaters. This might be part of James Gunn's um, film universe because he actually shared for this movie specifically. Um, it's going to be starring, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, Jolo Mariduena. 
the uh, actor from Cobra Kai who plays Miguel. Um, so I'm excited for him to be in a in like a bigger spotlight, um, in a big like Hollywood movie, and also just having a Latino representation in the superhero movie genre. So I'm rooting for it for that reason. Uh, I don't know much about Blue Beetle, but I did see a version of him. I don't think it's the same version that he's gonna play in Smallville when I did the entire series uh, watch of that. And um, I don't know if I've seen him in anything else, but I, I have seen like how he looks like in comics. Uh, and he seems like he might be a pretty interesting character. Um, but because I don't know about him, that's why it's kind of low on my list. And then something else that we haven't got an, an official trailer for, but we have seen kind of some sneak peeks at in, in terms of like images. Last on my list is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And that one is coming out on Christmas of 2023. So pretty much like almost a whole year from now. And the first Aquaman movie was pretty like mediocre for like beginning almost the, to the whole end of the movie. But I think that whole third act of that one was like super good. And was kind of the only good thing about the movie. But I'm hoping this one will be uh, better. I, I don't know if it will. To be honest, like I, I don't really know how to feel, which is why this movie is kind of the bottom of my, of my list. But it is going to be the last movie kind of set in the original uh, DC Universe, depending on what does happen in The Flash or when that movie takes place. But at least release-wise, this will probably be the last thing. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's just kind of whatever, but I'm hoping it, it, it is good. Uh, I like Jason Momoa, so I think after the reboot happens, he's going to be a new character in the DC Universe, Lobo, which might be his dream role. And I think it is more fitting for him than Aquaman, even though I do think he did a good job as Aquaman. But um, we'll see more of Black Manta. So hopefully that'll be cool in this movie. But those are the movies that like I'm kind of keeping track of and I like I'm excited to see. There are some other ones that, that I, I am probably gonna see, but I'm not like dying to see them. Uh some of those ones are like the Super Mario World movie or more Super Mario Bros, I think it's called. Um it actually looks pretty good to me. Uh I was not expecting good things originally but the trailers have sold me on it and also some uh action movies like john wick chapter four um indiana jones i've seen uh those movies and i've liked them so this one looks pretty good and is directed by james mangold who did logan which was an amazing movie and his other movies have also been good so, I think that one's going to be good. And uh, if you know any more, any other movies that I might be interested in, let me know in the comments. Uh, I have been going to the movies a lot more since they opened up after the pandemic. And I am hoping to continue that trend into the new year. So, I'll be reviewing some of them, not all of them. So stay tuned for my thoughts on these when they release. I'm also excited for a, a few TV shows, but I didn't want to include that on my list of movies because they're not movies, even if they might be like movies or cinematic um, in the same way movies are. Uh, but even higher than any of the movies on my list is, is the number one show that I'm looking forward to, which is due first thing come next year out of anything else on this list, and it's The Last of Us HBO series. The Last of Us, the first game, is my favorite story in any medium, and the game, in my opinion, is, is a masterpiece, even despite the gameplay, which is not perfect. Um, but I also like the sequel, Last of Us Part Two. and they might kind of do some things from the second one in this series. 
uh, even if it's not like technically the same uh, timeline. Um, and they also are going to fill in some gaps that we never saw in, in the original games. So I'm excited to see that, which includes new characters and maybe new locations as well. Um, so yeah, that's like number one on my list. And then the, the Marvel Disney Plus shows that are coming out. Um, these ones are kind of more in the middle if I put them with the movies. Um, but the one that I'm looking most forward to is Loki season two. Because I was pleasantly surprised with the first season of Loki. And that was actually one of my favorite Disney Plus series so far. Um, so I'm excited to see more of it. And also it's kind of tying in with the first Marvel movie coming out next year, which is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with King the Conqueror. And he's kind of the new the new Thanos. So um, I'm excited to see as much of him as they want to show us and find out more about the different variations of him. So I'm excited for, for that reason. And Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston's dynamic in the first movie as Mobius and Loki was one of the best parts about it. So I'm excited to see more of that. And then uh, Secret Invasion, which is the first Disney Plus series coming out next year. I'm excited for that, especially even more so now. After watching the um, Marvel cartoon, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, because they adapted the Secret Invasion storyline in season two of that show. And I think they did that like really fucking well until the ending. I think the way that it was wrapped up in that series was not the best. But until the end, the journey getting there was really engaging so if this show is able to do anything even near as well as that cartoon did i think it's going to be amazing um and i'm super excited for it even even though there's not like a list avengers that are going to be front and center in the show uh, i hope they do have some surprises and we do know roadie is going to be in it so i'm excited for that and then the last uh disney plus show that Seems to be is going to be a 2023 release. We don't know for sure because none of them have release dates. Um, is Echo, which is a spinoff of Hawkeye, which came out last year, 2021. Um, and I'm excited that for that one, mostly because it's we it's our next confirmed appearance of Daredevil, which is one of my favorite current Marvel characters in the MCU, and also just and throughout my life he's been one of my favorites. I'm one of the very few people who actually liked the Ben Affleck movie and still think it's good. Um, but I am also interested in seeing uh, Maya Lopez's story because um, I think she was interesting in Hawkeye. More so like in, in, in the beginning of the show. I feel like the way they wrapped up her story in that show was, wasn't the best. But I'm excited to see more about her and her culture which is going to factor into the story. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I am excited for it. And I hope you have a great new year filled with fortune and leisure. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. Peace.